once again, welcome. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time out to speak with me uh, about your art and your career. Appreciate you, man. Thanks, man. So um, tell us your story. How did you develop an interest in um, film and photography? Um, well, it was in, well, I've been like taking pictures uh, like for a long time, you know, with the, you know, disposable cameras and everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, like right after high school, I had started a, um, a clothing line and the reason I started it because I went to UMES, uh, University of Maryland Eastern Shore, okay. like one mall that was like 30 minutes away and like two stores that you can really shop in, <laughs> like a uh, Hot Topic and like uh, like one urban store. Mm. And then I was like going to class one day and I seen like two guys with the same shirt I had on. And that was just it for me. Like, <laughs> I was like, I gotta I got make my own stuff. Yeah. So I started my own clothing line. Um, it was called For Love Clothing. Um, I wanted something like timeless, you know, I mean, love is timeless though, so, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, still, you know, I mean, it just, it goes on forever. They had like, a bunch of different designs. I was like, um, um, like spray painting, uh, sweatshirts and, uh, taking the pockets off jeans and switching them around and stitching them, doing all like hand stitching and everything. Mm. And then, um, like I take the pictures of it and then I started taking, doing photo shoots of people in my clothes and stuff. And then other people wanted me to do photo shoots of other people. <laughs> and then I started, uh, one of my friends did, um, he was a skater. And um, I was just like getting some shots of him skating and stuff. And then I just started getting more into photography and then less into the uh, clothes. So I was doing the clothes for probably about uh, four or five years. Mm. And, um, like I discontinued it just to focus on film because it was, it was just, it was a lot, you know I mean? Just <laughs> with everything, doing the, doing the photo shoots, the websites, the, the clothes and marketing. And it's just a lot, you know I mean? Really starting off a business for the first time. But um. I, t- I took that and just in this like d- uh, like dove deep right into into um, videos. I started off with like videos, more than photography. Mm. Um, I was doing um, I call what like hybrid shoots where I would shoot video and do like a photo shoot in video form and then take the screenshots out as the pictures. Like mm. I'll just pause it, like do a, like she posed and I pause it and I'll take the screenshot out, and a screenshot of that and just post it and uh, and uh, that would be my photo shoot version and pictures and then I got like start getting like photography lights. I was like, oh, that changed the game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's been, it's been pretty crazy. I've been shooting since about, uh, about 2007 though. Mm. So, um, what's your biggest inspiration besides, um, what was your biggest inspiration for photography? Um, like, do you look up to any other photographers? Um, yeah, I mean, I just like, I just like art, like, you know what I'm saying? If you see something that's just, that's, that's powerful, you know what I mean? It, it hits you a certain way. Mm. You know, I always wanted to, 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 to create stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like I could never, I could draw a little bit, but like my art is just like capturing things and, 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 and something I see. And, you know what I mean? Just, just having an eye uh, to capture something. But I've always wanted to paint or like super hi- hyper realistic, uh, like uh, paintings and stuff. I love that stuff. Mm. but um like everything everything is, is a is an inspiration you know just seeing just going outside and seeing something that's cool and you can take it and seeing it seeing the, how the light hits it be a different way you know what i mean it's like everybody has a different eye and their perception or something mm. i definitely agree um my first time with photography my gr- mother gave me like one of those little um toy film cameras mm-hmm. and uh i would use that to take pictures and whatnot and um i just grew a love for it we also used to get like national geographic uh books uh yeah, like, yeah, yeah. uh from people all over the place like india china and stuff like that and that's how i fell in love with port- portraits so um yeah that's that's how it all started man um starting out how did you get clients um really just my friends, um, whoever was around. Um, and then people like, I always had my camera on me too. Mm. So uh, that was like a big thing. If I like, there was, I wore like a, like a necklace. You know what I mean, like, I had mm. my camera with me everywhere. It was like, oh, you take pictures, you take pictures then. You know what I mean? So then, and then I started talking to people. That was like one of my ways to promote. But other than that, just um, like, I've been on social medias forever since my, since Black Planet, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I've been, you know what I mean? It's from Black Planet to MySpace to, you know what I mean? Everything. So I've always been trying to network and, and, and build with people forever. So I just, I'll hit people up. What's up? Let's shoot. Let's shoot. Let's work. You know what I mean, I still, to this day, I'm hitting people up every day. Let's work. Let's do something. You know what I mean? Because I love, it's what I love to do. You know what I mean? I don't, I tell people that I don't, you know what I mean, there's no free shoot, but at the same time, like I do it, you know what I mean? I, I'll shoot because that's what I love. Yeah. You know I mean? Yeah, I definitely feel the same way. Um, 
from your social media, I know I noticed that you've been traveling quite a bit. Um, what places have you been to? Um, you yeah, recently, I'm on this. Um, I'm on a uh -huh. tour with my friend. He has a clothing line, uh, Only Vibes. Okay. Um, he, um, we have like uh, local artists come and perform uh, their music and stuff, and they have like and draw on the walls and stuff, and uh, they just wear the clothes while they do it for like cross promotion. Mm. Um, but we're on tour right now. We went to um, New York, uh, LA, Atlanta, and we're going to Philly on Halloween. And we're trying oh, to figure okay. out some dates after that. But we're trying to hit, you know, I mean, this is not, there's nothing really going on right now. And it's like, a, a, I've been one to a platform for artists to, like I said, we don't really have a platform here where artists can shine mm. and show, show they, you know, their worth and stuff. But I'm just feeling like we're, I guess we're the, we're the platform now, you know, because there's not really anything going on. But um, yeah, I've always, uh, my, my goal was always to like be a, a traveling uh, photographer and, and shooter, just, you know what I mean? Pay, pay me to come out and shoot, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's my thing. Like I always wanted just, just be a minimalist, have, you know, just a bag for just my, uh, you know what I mean? A couple of, a couple bags of clothes and just my camera bag and just be able to go anywhere. That's, that's like really my goal. I'm trying to get rid of everything I have so I can like just be able to move around. Mm. I feel that, man. I definitely uh would love to do that as well. So how important is that sense of community for you and your creativity? Um, that's definitely like the most important thing, especially now, because it's like, you know, people don't even want to come outside, <laughs> really. So you mm. got to have somebody that you, you know I mean, that you're working with or, you know, so I've only really been shooting friends for the most part, you know, mm. um, you know, just people that's, that's, that I've been meeting recently. Um, I feel like they 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 want to do something, but it's 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 kind of hard, difficult right now, and um, just even just finding people, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to go get into some like nerdy questions. Um, mm -hmm. what type of equipment do you use? I, I noticed that you just got a, a a new Sony. What type of Sony is that? Yeah, I got the Sony A7 III. Finally, I've been I've been checking on it since it came out. Mm. I'm like two years behind, but like I've been trying to get into full frame. I had, I had Sony um, for about four years now, um, but I started with, I mean, I started with Canon, but I had a Panasonic. I had, um, what? I had a, I had a Nikon that I got rid of real quick, <laughs> but I, mm. I do like Nikon for portraits. I'm thinking I want to get another Nikon. Like I keep looking at stuff, you know what I mean? It's different stuff, but mm. it's, it's, it's all in the lenses. Um, I do both, so that's why I got the Sony for um, for video and and photography. I feel like it was the best. You know what I mean, mm -hmm. it's all about it's all about what lenses you use. Really, that's that's the key. You know what so, I mean? So what what's your favorite lenses, depending right. on the project? Right now, and I got this eighty five Rokinon. Okay. But it's a one point two. Manual. Manual lens. Oh man. All all manual, even in video, I'm manual manual video and. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but you know everything. I, I use all manual settings anyway. You know, what I mean? there's no automatic anything. Mm. But just the manual focus and be able to just dial in all the way. You know, you know, you, be, you could be focused in on the nose and her eyes be you know, out of focus with the with the one point two. Absolutely. <laughs> so yeah, but but the light, the way the the way the light hit, especially at nighttime, you can get it all the way. You know what I mean, get the all the way good light. Mm. It still look like daytime. So. Are you more focused on digital or do you have any like aspirations to work in uh, with film cameras as well? Um, I want to do want to get back into film cameras. Um, but I've been digital so long and mirrorless so long now. And it's almost, you mean, I got to, I got to go backwards, <laughs> but I do want to film. I got two Polaroids that I play around with, but it's not the same. It's not like a real film. Yeah. Camera though. Yeah. I want to get into film though. I had like, I took, um, like film classes in high school, I had I was in like a printing class. We we mm -hmm. had like the dark room and you know I had to do everything. But that's been like as I said, it was high school like 2006 though. So I ain't I ain't I ain't have film in you know so long. And then it's like I try to get you know everything done in camera. Like I hate editing mm -hmm. and going back. It's just you know what I mean it's, it's it makes it look better you know. But I try to make try to get the most best possible shot you know. Mm -hmm. without without having to do anything else so yeah you know, i mean i just feel like for like digital i can i can see better yeah editing is time consuming but me personally i i love doing it especially when i want to like convey a certain um tone to a photograph you know mm -hmm. what i mean mm -hmm. um but when you do edit what type of programs do you use is it lightroom photoshop yeah mostly lightroom um photoshop if i gotta do some some extra stuff but mm -hmm. Um, mostly Lightroom, just just changing changing colors and you know adding saturation and vibrance and, and stuff. 
Okay. I, don't, like I, said, I don't do too much, but I, I do a little face smoothing if they if they ask. But I like, I mean, I like natural. Like that's what people. I like to my pictures to look like humans. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like the extra like soft like buttery is nice sometimes, but some people just like overdo it. You know what I mean, like just the skin yeah. be like smooth all the way out. <laughs> yeah, it's like people um, don't even look like. I want to see some pores on the skin. You know what I mean? Yeah, I definitely know what you mean, man. Um, it just seems like a lot of people want to follow the wave of what they're seeing other people do. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, especially with the climate, a lot of, uh, it's not realistic in a sense, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I appreciate creators like you that, that stick to that realism and, and, and um, just keep it natural, man. Yeah. Appreciate you. I just been, I've been trying to just, you know, I promote black women. You know, for mm -hmm. the most part, that's that's you know black people, but mostly black women. Like that's all. If you look on my page for you for years and years, that's you know, we're not you know shown as much. You say, you say how many? How, what's our percentage in in the nation? But <laughs> where we run everything? Yeah. Like it's not you know, but we're not on the platforms that we should be. So I try to try to make a platform you know to just promote us. So. Mm -hmm. Why? That was an, an another question that I had. Um, why is it important? I mean, you, I guess you already explained it, but why is it important to promote black women specifically? Um, you know, they, they're the most uh, ridiculed and, and looked down and, you know, like they have it the hardest out of everybody for, for really, really <laughs> like, you know, I try to, I just, I just try to, you know, and I love black women. That's what I love. So, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I got a mother, I got a sister, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just, you know, that's, that's, that's just family. Yeah, man. And it's, um, it's refreshing to see something outside of the European standard of beauty. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, black women and black men are pretty much the heartbeat of the United States culture. You know what I mean? A black woman can wear cornrows and it's normal, but if Kim Kardashian does it, it's like trendy and trend setting and stuff like right. that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's just it's just frustrating, man. It's frustrating. Um, who do you want to shoot with the most? Anybody, famous or not famous? Um, it's a lot. Uh, I want to do like a. Maybe a Yeezy season shoot, mm. something like that, where it's like minimal. But I mean, because you know how his house is, where it's just like minimal, but it's it's, it's like classy. Yeah, I want to do something where it's like you know what I mean, where he has. Yeah, I don't know. I, I like it's just a couple of people, but definitely some some fashionable type shit. Um, Michael Jacobs just just likes some of my pictures recently. Hey, so uh, let's see. I'm gonna hit him up. Let's see what he's talking about. But yeah. um, I mean, yeah, I guess a couple. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, what does photography mean to you? Um, just, um, like it's so broad though, but just, I guess just capturing, cause you could do this with, they got iPhone photographers. I'm about to say capturing with a camera, but it's just, yeah, capturing, capturing something through light with a lens. Hmm. Mm. It's like just capturing a moment in time. Yeah, yeah, capturing capturing moments. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How long have you been shooting? Uh me personally since 2012. Okay. Yeah, right. Um when I first started college or I believe. And um I used to look at old photos through my mom's photo album and it was like documenting that that certain time in essence back in the day you know certain moments that they would never give back because it was just back in that specific time you know what I mean and um that's what photography means to me is just documenting certain moments that will always take us mentally back to where we were at during that time mm -hmm. You know what I mean, and um, I don't know it's, it's it's just impactful to me to just capture certain things and just to 
capture certain beauty that's not considered beauty in the standard of what they portray out there. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I had some like um remember when people was doing the ebony, the ebony challenge? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just like thinking like why is there only what two, three black magazines? Like I yeah. wanted a, a magazine where it's you know it's a standard, but you, they put it on the same standard as as that. Like, mm-hmm. I, like I mean, it's like you know, it's only what two what, Ebony Jet. <laughs> like that's what, it. <laughs> like you know what I mean, like they you know they put they did a little Vogue challenge, but it's like that's not us. Yeah, it's like you know I mean, we need something that's that's up uh, uh that really shows us. I mean, fortunately, the last couple of years, um, being black, I don't want to say it's become trendy, but it has, you know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. they just had, uh, what was it, a couple years ago, the Natural Hair uh, Festival, uh, Curly Girl Collective, and Mm -hmm. then black people being promoted at, like, things like Afropunk and and stuff like that. And Mm -hmm. I think it's extremely impactful because, just because of social media. You know what I mean? We can create our own narrative and 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 show who we are and not what they portray us as. You know, and it's extremely important. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you describe your photography style? Um, like I said, I just say capture moments, n- naturally capturing moments. Mm. Uh, just timeless. Everything is timeless. If you look back four or five years ago, it looked like it can, it can be you know, yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know I mean, <laughs> even with um with video, I, f- I feel like it's timeless still. I try to make it, you know, it's still capturing the moment, but you can still look back and it's like, you can, you can see, you can see, you know, it's, it's mm-hmm. still relevant. Um, and that's why I love video too, because it's, it's you, you see what happened before the moment and after that moment. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like you see the whole, the whole picture of that, of that one photo. You know, if the video was just, 60 frames or 24 frames in a second or whatever you know what i mean mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Just that many pictures taken put together but you know you take you're getting a, a bunch of photos all at one time mm-hmm. <laughs> video that's why i really love video and just and just saving screenshots out of that saving that one shot that's perfect but yeah it's just finding that finding that perfect one what's your process behind making um a video do you write out the script do you do um storylines do you like how do you prepare what you want to uh how do you prepare what you want the finished product to be um most of the time i just capture a lot of film mm. try to catch the best moments of time and then and then back in post i'll just take those moments and put them together and make a story mm. out of that mm. i found like the best way for me because i don't want to force stuff you know what i mean i just want to capture it you know mm especially because I do a lot of events too, you know, it's, it's no force in anything. It's just like, you just get what you get. <laughs> and so I, I, I try to do that in my, in my photography, in my uh, video type, um, like model videos. I just have them hold mm-hmm. and just be natural and just do your thing. And I'll just record. And like, sometimes I won't even tell them I'm, I'm, I'm recording video. I'll be doing, I'll be doing a photo shoot mm-hmm. and just video on and just have them still posing like they're doing a, uh, like they're doing a photo shoot and just, and just capturing the video version of it while I'm like going in, you know, Mm. but um like i said just, yeah i just want to like i don't want to force anything i just want to capture who you are in your essence so i don't you know what i mean I just, mm. just, but for for a different it's, it's a different thing for like a music video i like write it out and and try to storyboard and stuff but for just for just photo shoot type stuff i just try to capture the moment for the most part okay so i've seen that you um are in a brand new studio right um Yes and no. I was in a studio on Laurel, um, but I just moved to Silver Spring. Um, mm-hmm. I got an apartment out here, and I've been shooting in my apartment, and it's been pretty fun. I got a little extra space in here now. Mm. So which do you prefer, um, in-studio photography or out in the field? Uh, it depends on the time of day. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, golden hour is you know outside is the best location like mm-hmm. golden mm-hmm. i got a spot right in my house with the sun the sunset and it's like right on the wall and you know i put a mirror right there so it reflects too mm-hmm. it's just you know, i mean like perfect shots right there so you know, i haven't needed a studio for that but you know if, if it's a certain thing somebody want to might need a product shoot or you know a certain type of shoot that you need a, a wall for 
or something or, or photography light. So it's, it just depends on really the project. But for my stuff, I like natural light and like just mm -hmm. trying to get the best natural light. I I like natural light as well. But um, as I learn more about photography and about the products, like the, the advanced products that come out, like Godox, uh, Flash and Strobes mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Um, if if what 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 is your favorite like strobe or flash that you use uh i guess for certain events um what uh the cheapest best ones i would say alien bees mm. um but i had i can't remember the name of it. the other studio i used to work at he had some uh just crazy lights i just i can't even remember the name of them mm. but um like yeah, it's just, it's definitely it definitely uh makes a difference though with with the right with the right lighting setup like you yeah. say, like some of it is it just recreates the sun sometimes you know what I mean like it, it'll mm -hmm. make it look like golden hour with the right lighting so you know it, it, but some of that does cost a lot though too I've been always working I've been trying to get this the best eat smallest budget I can you know what I mean mm -hmm. like the best lenses for the lowest price and you know what I mean like I just try to make it work with what I got for the most part I've been trying to just make it work. But um, like that's what I said, this was recently this year, I just been splurging on, on equipment, and the right equipment that I wanted. I got three lens set up now. <laughs> like I've been, I had a, a one lens for like four or five years and just was shooting with a, with a 50. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like, it's, it's really different now for me. I mean, it's, it's important. A lot of like new photographers think that you have to have the, the best gear, the, the gear with the highest price tag or uh a hundred thousand different lenses but to me all the greatest master photographers only have that one camera that they mastered or the mm -hmm. two or three lenses that they mastered you know mm -hmm. um how was that important to you at for, when you first started did you want to like i guess collect as much gear as you could i did uh, when i first first started um i was shooting with my uncle who mm -hmm. was like a wedding photographer and he had about 15 all L lenses mm. and so mm. I had a chance to like work with some of the best stuff like early on and, and you know that kind of economy kind of wanted me to get some some better equipment but you know let them, let them, some of them is like 1500 1800 dollars for one <laughs> you know but you know I just and I my uh that's not gonna really work on my t3i <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> yes. it's like um like I said, I just had a 50 for the most part and it's trying to, trying to work with the best lighting, you know, get, uh, and, and I did, a, I did a lot of, um, renting from like borrow lenses. I'll borrow, mm. I'll, I'll like just rent a lens for the weekend or rent a camera for the weekend and, um, and try to have somebody, uh, pay me for the, uh, for the shoot for it. You know, so mm. I can reimburse me and then just get enough content where, where I, I made enough foot back in me. But, mm. um, yeah, a lot of times I just just yeah, say work what I got 50 50 millimeter <laughs> that nifty 50, 50 dog that yeah. nifty 50 man um that's to be honest that's what I was working with for a long time I had a Canon t my first camera professional camera was a Canon T2i yeah T2i yeah yeah and I was I put that little nifty 50 through through the ringer man it was like my workhorse for like maybe five years <laughs> and it was good though it was good back yeah. then like it was good quality for the time. Like you look at it now, it's kind of like, eh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know how, how uh, you know technology advances that quick. But back then it was great. You know what I mean, it's still probably like with the right lens, you can still get some quality shots on it. Like you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, and a lot of people, a lot of photographers fail to realize that if you want like a real cinematic look, vintage lenses will take you a long way. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's the right um, focal length too, though. Yeah, 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 and um right depth of field uh, it, it's a lot that goes into it man uh, yeah. and um i feel that if you just focus on getting all the best gear and not really master what you have like you'll never be like uh i mean you'll be a good photographer but not great mm -hmm. i said they, they got the best of the year best gear but they're shooting on an automatic yeah <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> You're not a real photographer if you got you not in manual mode. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Got to do the settings. So, what are your biggest goals for 2021? Um, I just want to further um, 
further getting all this content. I'm, I'm pretty backed up on content right now. I'm um, just trying to get everything out, even the old stuff. I just want to re recut up and just put it out. Um, I just started a new clothing line. I'm, I'm like slow putting it out. Okay. <laughs> but uh, I, I'll tell you now, it's called Sheesh, uh, SH333SH. Okay. Um, I got the LLC for it already, but I'm just like, I wanna, I'm just trying to get it together before I really start putting it out like that. Mm. But I'm gonna build that up and um like get some more um I got some some merch on the way for that and um it's kind of like an umbrella it's, it's a consignment shop slash uh cl- <clears throat> clothing line right now mm. but I want to want to make it an umbrella where it's it's more things under it type of thing so um I'm definitely gonna be um speaking to you about that later on and um just say yeah, more shoots more profit more peace like yeah like just just more progress man yeah. I definitely uh would love to look at some of your pieces that you come out with, you know, and, and, and possibly purchase. Um where can we see your work? Um other than Instagram, I am building a new website um for everything. Mm-hmm. Uh all my old stuff. I got like, you know, I mean, I had videos from old old companies and stuff. I'm gonna still put like a little park piece with my old stuff on it but i want to put everything in one hub um like i got a vimeo page for my videos and i got you stuff on youtube and i just got stuff mm-hmm. you know what i mean all these different places i want to put it in one one different i mean one actual spot but i'm just trying to figure out the best you know gui to go with if i'm gonna do shopify or if i'm gonna do like a squarespace or whatever mm-hmm. but uh, like i said within the next but i guess before january um i'm gonna try to have everything done um I just been just like I said, been trying to organize and get getting this new new place together. So this is yeah, it's coming. Okay, okay, okay. Um have you had uh do you have any like cool stories to share from a photo job or um a video gig? Um, let me see. I mean, this video gig I'm doing is just crazy. This Only Vibes thing, like I'm meeting so many new artists. We do a, a show every Saturday. Um, yesterday was the six to eleven. It's usually like between like four, four to ten, six, like between that time. Hmm. Um, maybe like seven, eight artists come out and perform. And I've been meeting so many talented people, like young to old, and even in other cities, like. They've been really showing love and <laughs> in different places we found um in atlanta we found um this one guy who has um he does art and he has a space that we uh before, that we uh rented the venue from mm-hmm. but it but the art was like from like floor to ceiling uh walls every on the, on everything on all the all the walls yeah yeah, yeah. the super big canvases that he does and um you know that that pays for the space <laughs> and it's mm-hmm. just like that's what i want i want a warehouse where i can like have a whole hub have everything everybody can come through and you know create and type stuff well that's what i'm working on that's like my main main goal mm. um to just get like one big warehouse with a whole hub of with just everything in it you know a separate video uh place separate uh photography studio uh recording studio print shop mm. uh, computer labs so where you can get your graphics done and you know covers and everything just all one shop a consignment shop a little lounge in there and it's just everything you know what i mean mm. a spa, <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> holistic you know what i mean jump yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, and it's it. Everybody has their own business too, so it's like it's, it'd be pretty easy to get people in there. It's just having the space for it. Mm. So I'm just I'm just working on a business plan for that too. Um, but yeah, it's just a lot going on. I'm working on just trying to get the plans for. So yeah, it's just like 2020. I feel like the next couple of years is gonna be it's gonna be lit. Yeah, man, definitely uh, grind mode. Um, which project are you most proud of, and why? Um. Every new project that I do, I feel like I'll be, it's, it's, it's getting better and better. I feel, I feel I, I can see my progress now. <laughs> it's like, it's coming effortlessly for me now. You know what I mean? I got I don't got to do too much to even set up. I just like, I just, it just comes natural, you know? And that's, that's what's really making me feel like, like I'm supposed to be doing this. Mm. Um, so yeah, every new project I, I come out with is like, it's better than the last one. It's like, I'm, it makes me more proud than the last one. So you're you do photography and videography for a full-time career right um not yet i'm trying to get there it it doesn't feel all the way yet how is it how 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 hard is it to balance um 
work life and your art life oh that's the that's the uh, <laughs> that's the most difficult thing really i've been trying that's that's what i've been working on mm. um, i'm trying to get it's almost 50 50 now where like as soon as i'm i'm, I'm home from work it's everything is about about business for me now mm. and like don't call me after after work you know for something else because mm. you know it's, it's I'm, I'm doing stuff for myself even if it's just going somewhere to network or you know putting some videos out or i'm just organizing some stuff i'm like i feel like if it's i'm doing something towards it then a little bit every day then it's okay mm. um you know i said i'm back i'm so backed up on edits right now and i got like bro i, got, I just bought a whole new five terabyte yeah <laughs> <laughs> i got the same joint right now <laughs> I got like, bro, i got like 30 of these like it's uh -huh. so many so i'm trying to put everything on one and like i said get all my old footage out and and just, you know, once I once I feel like once I get all the old stuff out, it'd be like, oh dang, you did that too? Dang, you did that too? It's like, mm -hmm. yeah. It's like I've been mm -hmm. it's like I probably got like 50 projects from this year that I ain't put out. You know what I mean? Just just photo shoots and different stuff. And then um like little reels. I want to get like reels of my best things, my best like just videos and stuff. Mm -hmm. you know, put that all together. This is so much content I can I can put together, but the time wise, you know, you gotta spend eight hours at one job. Mm. By the time you do that, you be just I gotta get back on the computer again when I get home. It's like, uh, mm -hmm. I'm trying to force you. I mean, trying to force it. Luckily, my last job is um, I was working at a solar company, and I was kind of like, kind of like in the field and in the, on the computer, but mostly in the field. So mm. I had a little bit of freedom to where I wasn't on the computer all the time. So by the time I got home, then I'm not like, I gotta get on the computer again. It was just, it was refreshing again. Mm. But um, but now I'm like, I'm been working from home with this new job I just started. So it's just like I'm on, the, I'm on, the, I'm on the computer all day. We're at home. Mm. And then I'm, I got to get off and still be at home on the computer. <laughs> yeah, I'm tired. I be tired of screens sometimes. You know what I mean? Got to you got to go outside and just like not look at the screen for a little bit and just put, take, leave the phone in the house mm. and just like get some air and some sun. Like I'm be tired of screens all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. I definitely know what you mean. Um, being a especially being an entrepreneur, it's always good to have something to that'll pay the bills but you have to put extra sweat equity and what you really want to do you know what i mean and it, even though it's tough i'm pretty sure it will be fruitful in the end you know mm -hmm. i was telling my man to, um for an entrepreneur you have to uh set set your hours like if you have to, uh set your hours as if you're working at a job mm -hmm. like if you if you don't have anything just still do an eight to eight to four or whatever get mm -hmm. up like you going to work, you got to get dressed, like brush your teeth, mm -hmm. like you going to work, get up and like get on your job. Mm -hmm. and you take a break like you like you have, you know what I mean? Set your breaks and and treat like that for a little while before you can then go do what you want to do or whatever. But set it, set it, you know, set a schedule because mm -hmm. uh, he just started getting into investments. So he can really go anywhere and it's on his time, really. But now I'm like, no, nah, you got to set, set, a, set an hour, set a day. So you're doing it every day at a certain time. I mean, mm -hmm. you're working for yourself, but you, yeah, you, you get a certain amount of money every day, but you got to, you know, set your hours. It's discipline. It's yeah, discipline. That's how you set your discipline. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how hard was it at first to balance the art and the business? Um, yeah, especially with friends, like, I feel like they didn't want to pay, you mm -hmm. know what I mean, since they knew me. And that's why I started working with, really, like, just to get it out there. It's like I try to try to you know call a friend to shoot so, just so I can promote to other people, mm -hmm. but you know then them, them old friends call me yeah let's do a shoot let's do another shoot let's do another shoot but it's just like come on bro like you know you gonna eventually pay me or what yeah but you know um, just yeah just yeah, you gotta set a standard like this is the price and that's it you know that's why that's what I found out um, just just set, the price is the price. <laughs> and if, and if they they like your work, they're gonna pay. It don't matter what it is, you know. What I mean, if they like your stuff, they're gonna pay. It. And Sony so, cameras aren't cheap, so <laughs> right, <laughs> you know right. I mean? I'm like, well, I didn't, I didn't spent just just for the camera, I spent sixteen. Yeah, <laughs> I bought you know the one lens was eight hundred, so mm -hmm. it's like, ah, oh, I got I'm, I'm still in the red right now. <laughs> <laughs> like you know what I mean? So, but yeah, definitely, um, definitely just yeah, trying to I'm still trying to just get the right paying clients. You know, mm -hmm. if, I, if I can get a consistent, you know, somebody that wants something done every month or every couple months where they just paying, you know, a certain amount. So I think that's something I'm going to try to get like a subscription service type thing. 
Mm. I think that's my next plan to try to get a subscription service. If you want, you know, a certain amount of content per per month, you pay, you know, a certain amount, you get a certain amount of photo shoots or whatever, videos or whatever you want to, whatever you know, they're trying to do. Even people that's um, like music artists, you get what, two videos a month or something for a certain fee type of thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm trying to get it. I feel like subscription based like models are, are the thing right now. You know, people are accepting that. And um, I learned that passive income works as well, like creating little presets for um, Lightroom or LUTs for uh, Final Cut or whatever you uh, work with helps, you know, and just having a having an internet presence is important for people like us creators, you know what I mean? And that's that's why I wanted to do the merch too, if I can cross promote with that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Just having a separate income. Um, what's the biggest struggle you face in your career so far? Can you take us through the hardships that you had to overcome and the lessons that you learned from? Um, first thing that came to mind was just um, trying to get equipment and like asking people for money and mm. try saying I'm a pay them back mm. type of thing, and then like a shoot will fall through or, you know, like something happened where I couldn't get the money that I thought I was going to get. Like, you know, I'll be thinking like, yeah, if I get this camera, then I can make it back. I can get like you know, a couple of music videos and somebody going to pay for a photo shoot and I, mm. I can make it back in about a month or something. And then I'll tell somebody and then people not really paying for the photo shoots and like, I still got to pay that money back. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Or, or if I, I had rented the camera from borrow lenses and somebody cancels on the shoot and I didn't get a deposit for it and I'm just stuck with the bill. Mm-hmm. Like, that happened a bunch of times with people just canceling because I'm not, I mean, they, they I don't know, because I'm just asking people to shoot and not like actually professionally like getting paperwork and, 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 and getting the deposit for shooting stuff type of thing. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Um, trying to uh yeah trying to get trying to get money together really just just to fund my my <laughs> my progress has been been really difficult mm. but I think it's, it's, yeah just everything i've done everything i've always, always gotten i've gotten on my own for the most part you know what i mean i just you know, save up or, or sell some clothes or just you know what i mean i do some side jobs mm. to try to just to find my uh to find my passions but um i feel like it's coming together now that's great man and t- uh- I'm pretty sure we both know that photography is an expensive career to pursue. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like everything is 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 extremely high when you when it comes to like cameras and equipments and sound equipment and gimbals and all that. And then yeah. people feel like they can do their own now because it's, it's getting a little uh, less expensive. Mm-hmm. Like I just buy my own camera instead of paying you two hundred dollars or whatever. It's like. Yeah, but no, you could try. <laughs> like some people are good at it and it works, but mm. yeah. Like, <laughs> um, but yeah, man, I think that's the end of the questions I wanted to ask you. Uh, um, I just want to thank you again for taking the time out to um just have a conversation with me, man. It's great. I learned a lot of good gems. Oh yeah, definitely appreciate y'all. I definitely um want to see more, and I can't wait to see which I come up with and how y'all progress. Appreciate it, man. And uh, let us know um, your socials again and how people can book you and all that. Um, social media is uh, Instagram, D-A-Y-S-O-Z-E and Cybin Films. You can see my videos, C-Y-B-I-N Films. Mm. Um, the clove one will be on Sheesh. It's T-H-E-E-S-H-3-3-3-S-H, The Sheesh. Um, there's nothing on there right now, but check it in, in about a month. There's going to be a bunch of things on there. And, um, yeah, man, only vibes. Uh, you can see a lot of my stuff on there. I shoot all, all their, um, videos and pictures for the most part. Mm. Um, yeah. Appreciate you, man. Cool, man. Peace, man. I appreciate it. Peace.